Welcome back to Stuck on an Island where I'm stuck with you guys and we are always smiling. This is a two-part video, so if you missed the previous one, you may need to jump back. Now that I'm looking back, I can see all the signs. I tried to fill in the cracks that were spreading in my mind. But I was all out of hope, lost in an endless maze. The emptiness had a fall. Peeling this, but I actually do remember. And forgive the nails, people. You know, it's a good thing. It's just even and myself. We to forgive the nails. Yes. Because <laughs> a lot of people wouldn't want to be eating with nails and stuff. So. All right. So let me show you the trick to cutting the onion. Really, is let me see something. Yeah. The root part, you don't cut off the root because that's the part oh, that holds okay. everything. And you can just make a slice down there and just peel it apart. Okay. I'm sure there are other ways as well. If you guys know other ways to peel the onion, drop like pick it easy, comments. drop it in the comments, and you know, we all learn something new. Everything. But this way works just fine as well. Hey man, you see? That's why the meal things here in the kitchen don't work. So, tell me how big you want this now, Stephen. You want it this way, or should I do it this way? So, we're doing a kind of a roasted fish. So you, it don't mind. It's not a matter if the onions are Bigger. a little bit big. Mm -hmm. So it don't have to be fine diced. Okay. So just be creative. Okay. But get rid of a bit more of the skin, like the brown part here. Let me see. Cut the onion them. Just like this. Cut them in half. All of them. Yeah. So yeah and separate all right so a slight tip that most persons who once you watch food network or whatever you'll notice you try to always get um the pieces of food as uniform as possible because once you bite into something you don't want anything overpowering the other you understand so this looks to be perfectly fine now Again, we're cooking outdoors, so it's always going to have that rustic type of look where, you know, it's not perfect, but that's what we want. So the good thing about outdoor cooking is you don't have to worry about the heat you know because this wind trust me it's already doing enough justice so um i don't know if you want me to that's actually a good there. way to look at it because i'm oh, here complaining about the wind with the sand then. no you'd have the heat to be yeah there. that's actually a good vibe that's a vibe that's a vibe so you want me to cut this up now Stephen? you, you want can me cut to up regular way um how you cut up season but I'm this is going to be for the, the roast not... fish, so... Alright, so I'm just going to cut it up like this. Okay. 
guys it's not the safest way to cut but you know Too, it's too not gonna work as well because this is too soft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice dry. You have to use your mitts and. So I probably go use like uh let's say four garlic cloves. Four pegs. Okay. Yeah, but four four pegs. Sorry, yeah. So we're using four pegs. Okay, so we can just. Oh, this is four. Nice. So this is my method of tucking finger. Seeing as I'm using the garlic, so just gonna get these pieces, you know. Tip for the day: Don't cook with nails. Don't do what? <laughs> Don't cook with nails. <laughs> Alright, so I guess that would be our basic seasoning for the roasted fish that we're going to be doing. Um, yeah, you can have stuff like okra and whatever, but we're doing it a different way today. So, it's going to be a vibe. process easier because it's dark we're gonna throw like all of the seasoning into the fish which is already washed which is already cleaned and then I got this as a gift from Rainbow Valley so it's some curry with some other season like uh, scallion scotch bonnet pepper it's like a whole seasoning blend it's kind of convenient to be quite honest so no nah. nah, more than that more than that man more than this? Wow. 
want it to be flavorful. Boy, don't be stingy with it. You cooking like you in a <laughs> kitchen, sis. <laughs> All that curry flavor should be strong. Yeah? Yeah, this is supposed to be good, man. Ooh, coconut milk. Coconut milk. I've seen in the comments already people go, what coconut milk with curry? Oh my god, and they no, have a whole fit over it. It's a vibe. Coconut milk and they curry? They just never tried. All of it? Uh, no. Modelate. So halfway first. Yeah, half, okay. yeah. The good old bammies. Throw the bammies in. So we're gonna do like a, a one pot kind of dish. Or a one foil kind of dish basically. Uh, sorry about that. You guys might have seen the camera getting fogged up, and that's because of the, the salt from the air out here. Trust me. The salt from the air out here is ridiculous. Okay. You probably can put a little bit more coconut milk in here. So a little bit more. Okay. So this might be weird for a lot of people, but the whole concept is once you put all these in the foil, it's going to be the same thing anyway, so it's not a difference. Um, same thing with the bomb, you normally soak it in coconut milk. Yeah, that should be good. You normally soak it in coconut milk, so that's not a big issue. Uh, the fish in this dish is actually um, some basa fish, because my supplier kind of screwed me over, to be quite honest. Getting everything on it really quick, and then we're just gonna toss it on a foil and then wrap it up. See that? All right, all right. So we have the foil laid out. Um, our hands are full, so you guys might miss some of the parts to be honest. So we're gonna just toss this onto that and then get it wrapped up, and I'll bring you guys back to see everything. But yeah, my hand is full, her hand is full. All right, I want to involve you guys as much as we could. So basically the fish is in, trying to put the bamis on top. Um, there's a little bit of liquid there. If there's a lot of liquid and it's fully submerged, it's going to be considered steaming and we don't want it to be steamed. Well, steam or whatever you want to call it, I don't really care. I just want it to be good, taste good, and yeah, I'm good. All right, so we're going to wrap this up really quick and then just stir it onto, stir it onto the grill above some hot coals. So almost had a slight oversight, forgot to season up the fish. I mean, even with that curry seasoning thing, curry, as you know, has a bit of saltiness to it, so it'll be fine. But I use, um, I'll put the ingredients of this rub that I put on it. The same rub that I use for the tacos, same thing I put on this here. And yeah, should be good. All right, so flames are pretty strong. This is probably my favorite part about cooking on the beach, yo. It's just like there's just so much of this. You have no worries because like all that um, wood gets washed up onto the shore. This is a whole vibe. That should be perfect. Um, general rule of thumb, if you can hold your hand over it for three seconds and you have to move it, then it's good enough heat. Let's add back some of these. Six. All right, let's drop the thing on top. Thank you so much, Sarah, for be doing the light work. Not well, a the heavy work is your hand in the light. <laughs> Dad joke. Um, but that should be that. So um, we're just gonna pack up some of the stuff and let's leave this to go on there for a bit maybe about 15 minutes and it should be good all right we think this should be done I hope it should be done. All right, finally 
time to try this bad boy. What's so funny is that this bami looks like bami that I've had already at a restaurant, some steam bami. It was the first time I had steam bami, but it was pretty good. Let's see if this one is. Cheers. <laughs> the curry. Seasoning definitely give the bami a whole lot of flavor. So now this is a fish. Mm-hmm. Ah, pepper. <laughs> pepper. Definitely taste the flavor that the the coconut give it. Coconut milk. Don't be like me. This is a greedy spoon. Y'all wish you could taste it, don't it? <laughs> mm. Mm hmm. This is nice. Waited more than 15 minutes, but once again, worth the wait. Is some of the onion and carrot, you know, carrot, pepper. Okay, let me just kind of bypass this pepper. Pepper, bon you. Yeah, man. Pepper, say you cut the pepper, put in there, you know. True, but you know. You're the one who <laughs> chop up the pepper, them. Ah, uh, one. Let me take one. Let me take one for the vlog. For the vlog. <laughs> One for the soybeans, and it's not like them. The bami is a nice texture. Bami come out good. Yeah, nice texture. So I'ma try it really quick. Bassa fish, I think it's bassa fish or butterfish. It's not the most expensive fish out there, but the bami is really good. If you never tried steam bam before, definitely try steam bam. It's pretty good. And like I said, the fish is gonna taste as good as how good the fish is. You get what I'm saying? Flavors are good. It would be even better if it's like a, a snapper or a doctor fish. Curry flavor all around. Mm -hmm. mm. But then, that really brings it out. Curry. Normally, when I eat bami, it's you know the regular bami. steamed mm -hmm. fish. Bami. Okay. So I've never really had curry bami. Can't get over the bummy door. Bummy. Yeah, you can't get over it. <laughs> the fish is good, but the bummy is really what took it home for me.
All right, guys, so we are finally done with today's cooking series or whatever. If you guys never saw the video where we did the tacos, which was my favorite dish yeah, my off today, um, click on the link that I'll put somewhere above or just in the description box. Um, yeah, it's always a vibe getting to um, hang out with one of the subscribers. Um, if you guys want to see another video, perhaps with Sarah, As a matter of fact, there is going to be a video tomorrow where Sarah shows me around. Seafood. Yeah, so there's a there's a spot very close to where she lives. If you guys want to know exactly where that might be, you got to check out the video tomorrow to see that. Um, to this um, spot where they have some street food tomorrow. So I'll do another video with her, and then we'll see how good that street food is. Now you was on here on the experience. You seen what it is like cooking outdoors. Rough. It rough. What were some of the issues that you saw like today? Let me tell you the sand was definitely an issue. Crazy. The wind was nice, you know. Don't get me wrong, but it was too much with that sand. The sun wasn't hot, but the sun was. It was a nice view of the sun. Um, but I would definitely say the wind and the sand combined together. Definitely a no-no. Um, does it give you guys a bit of the experience? If you guys know what sandblasting is, all that wind and the sand mm -hmm. just hitting your face, yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. it's, it's not one of the nicest yeah, things. Yeah. And where we are, we are, I think it's called Gunboat Beach. Mm -hmm. That's one of my friends told me. It's called Gunboat oh. Beach. I don't know, but it's that beach right where the airport is. That's exactly where we are. And um, yeah, the sun was no problem. It was just basically the wind and mm -hmm. all of that. And then, of course, there are times when I don't know you guys might not realize but there's saltiness from the air from the beach so yeah, like on my lens kept getting salty you know a bit wet and salty so yeah that's one of those things but how did you feel about the experience though the experience basically being able to you know when you watch certain things but no being in the space is a total different feeling um i won't lie it's, it was an experience that i enjoy despite the difficulties because the food was a place <laughs> you know, but um, I don't think I need to this again. But beach, I need to beach probably, but not right now. So. Yeah, <laughs> you guys know we are in Kingston and there's a whole pandemic and whatever mm -hmm. the case is. So this is like one of the client yeah. kind of close beach kind of thing. Yeah, I've been to better beaches. But anyway, I'll catch you guys on the next video where we will hopefully check out street food tomorrow. Remember these three things: love, nature, and adaptation. And always remember, keep the link.